Today we're going to be learning about basic color theory and focusing really on mixing the primary colors to make secondary and intermediate colors. So before we get started, we're going to collect a variety of supplies that we're going to use. The first thing we're going to use is watercolor paints and these need to have at least three colors, red, yellow, and blue are primary colors because those are the paints that we're going to be working with to create a variety of different hues. You'll need a paintbrush. I'll be using probably a round brush and also a square brush. Any paintbrush will work. And I'm going to be painting on premium watercolor paper and this is a cold pressed paper which means that it allows the color to distribute nicely without wrinkling the paper. You can use a cardstock, but it just might wrinkle and not mix up as nicely. We're gonna use two glass jars filled with water. One will be dirty water and one will be clean water. So our hues that we will be mixing up will remain true to color. And then a paper towel that's folded into quarters so we can dab up the dab off the excess water. Um, you'll need a mixing tray. My watercolor paints have this nice mixing tray that's just the top of the lid, but you can use a paint palette or a yogurt lid works fine as well. Whatever you have hanging around. So before we get started, I want you to, I'm going to move this really quick. I want you to find a circle and trace it on your paper. And we're going to divide your circle into, oops, into 12 equal parts. So first we're going to quarter the circle. And after that's done, we're going to divide each quarter into thirds. So because four times three is 12, so we've got equal pie slices or not so equal pie slices because we're just eyeballing it. All right, so from there, we've got our basic color wheel with no color. And we're gonna talk about now primary colors. So before we get started, I want you to dip your brush, whatever brush you're using, into the water. And both, both jars of water right now are clean, so it doesn't matter which jar you dip it in. And you're gonna fill the little square with a nice amount of water. If these pigments are dry, then they aren't activated and they don't, um, they don't grab a hold of the brush. So when working with watercolor, you do want a fairly wet brush. You don't want it to be so soggy, but you do want it to be filled with water. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So I want you to just dip your brush and really pull at the pigment on the side because these are still kind of trying to activate. And if right now we were to wash our paper with this, with this paint, it would still be a little transparent and we wanna really pull that red out. So I'm just kind of like dabbing at the sides to really activate that pigment. And I'm gonna pull that pigment and I can, you can see a nice red color on the tip of my brush. And I'm gonna make a little, a little rectangle, kind of that's at an angle right here on my paper. So this is our first primary color red. I might even pull it down a little bit more because our rectangles are going to become squares in a second. There's our red. I'm gonna rinse it off in my dirty water cup and then dab my paintbrush off on my napkin and you can kind of see how much color is still left and then dip it in my clean and do the same with the yellow pigment. And this yellow pigment I just added because I was out of yellow. Do the same with yellow. A nice pigmented square right there. And it should, you should be able to kind of drag the pigment around your square and your water should kind of move with it. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be dry and kind of like you're 
trying to work the paint and it's not cooperating. So dip it in the dirty water and in the clean water. And then our last color is blue. Working that pigment into the water there. And we're gonna, that, I don't think I have enough on there. There we go. Now I've got a nice blue color in my brush and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing down here with this rectangle. So I've got my three basic colors and those primary colors cannot be made. Red, yellow, and blue just are, but they make all of the colors on our spectrum um, from these three colors. Mixing them together makes all of the other colors in our spectrum. So go ahead and wash your brush off. Give it a good wash. And while your paint is still kind of wet, you're gonna go in with First, I'm going to use yellow, and you're going to make this little rectangle right next to the red, and try not to touch the edge of the red just yet. We're going to make a little square, and before we meet these two together, we're going to make sure that that's really filled with pigment, and we're going to drag the tip of our brush right along the edge there and continue the pigment down then into the lower quadrant of this rectangle, kind of making the letter V, if you can see that. And now we've created this nice wash on the base of our colors and it should look orange. And I'll do the same thing with yellow and I will use blue. And these two mixed together are going to make a nice green color. So I think I don't have enough pigment on my brush. I think it's a little still watery. So I'm going to work that pigment in even a little bit more. So again, do a square. Don't let the square meet with the other color until you're absolute ready, absolutely ready to kind of mix them. And you're going to pull that color down because you don't really want that bleed to work its way up too far or else our primary color will turn into the secondary color which it's really wanting to do because I've got a pretty wet page here and then the last thing we're gonna do is add the red to the blue which is going to mix us a nice purple hue hue is just a fancy word for color add a little bit more pigment I've got a pretty wet brush here and I might need to actually dab it off a bit. And I'm going to meet them and I'm going to draw that pigment down into this kind of V shape. Okay. So they will bleed together a little bit. That's kind of what we want. We want to see the mixing of colors, which is a really cool effect in watercolor. You can actually see them starting to mix without having mix them on the tray. So this is called a wet on wet and the application is when you take a color or even a wet wash and you add another wet color to it and they kind of make this nice blend. So we've got the primary colors on both sides. Two primary colors on top equal a secondary color on the bottom. And now we're going to go in and fill in our color chart with our primary colors and we're going to make intermediate colors. Intermediate colors come from mixing a primary color with a secondary color. So if I added yellow to the bottom of this, it would create this almost warm yellow, not as lemony, but a, more of a sunset. And that would be considered an intermediate color because we're mixing, um, instead of one part, primary one part to one part primary. We're mixing one part primary with one part secondary and we're mixing those together to make the intermediate color. So we're going to go ahead and get back into the red and get a nice amount of color on your brush and fill in this top square here. Wash it off in the wet or excuse me, in the dirty water and then in the clean water. And you're gonna go in and you're gonna grab the yellow with your brush. 
really pick up that hue. You're going to count three empty spaces, one, two, three, and on the fourth space you're going to color yellow. All right, we're going to rinse off our brush, first in the dirty, then in the clean. And our last primary color is blue. So we're going to add some blue to our brush. And again, we're going to count over one, two, three empty spaces to the fourth empty space. And I think I still need a little bit more pigment on my brush. And you can see I, the, where the lighter kind of blue is, is where the water is pooling. So that's why it's really important to mix your pigments. I think the blue is still not really mixed up enough. We'll give it a good mix. All right, so from here, we're gonna make our first intermediate color. And our intermediate color is going to come from red. So I'm gonna put some red in my tray and make sure I grab a lot of pigment. And we're going to add just a small, small, small amount of yellow to make this almost orangey red dip my color, my brush in my clean water, and go ahead and go in with the yellow. And I think I grabbed just a little bit too much. I'm gonna mix those together, and you can see it changed it a little bit. It's not as vibrant of a red. It's a little bit more muted. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint that, being kind of careful not to blend our colors together because they are so close that they'll want to really bleed into each other. So I'm going to leave like this little, very slightly white space if you can see that. All right. From there, we're going to add even more yellow. And this would be considered our secondary color because it would probably be mixed about 50-50. So 50% 50 yellow to 50% red. And that's what our secondary color is comprised of. So there's my nice orange color. I'm gonna go in and fill that, that space with the secondary color. And that should be pretty close to what we kind of had created here. Half and half. All right, from there, give my brush a nice little wash. And we're gonna go in with even more yellow grab quite a bit on this because the red is pretty reactive to it's a darker pigment so you might need a little bit more yellow to go in and make this a nice more of a warmer yellow than a than a, an orange color I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and then paint it right next to the yellow and orange again this being an intermediate color and I've got a little bit of a bleed happening so it's going to be a little or more orange on that side because you can see that secondary color seeping in and that's okay because then you can kind of see how all the colors blend. From there we're going to move on to our second combination of colors which is yellow and blue. So we're going to grab, grab a hold of the yellow pigment and really a lot of yellow to a very small amount of blue because again blue is much more um, much more deep and it really reacts with the yellow so you only need a small bit of blue to create this nice light green color all right so and I think even that's too much I'm gonna just do a tiny 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 bit this is again going to be my intermediate color and it should look like a nice liney kind of color. My intermediate color, remember, is my secondary color mixed with my primary color. So my secondary color being, it would be green. Green mixed with yellow makes this nice lime kind of color. From there, I'm going to add a little bit more blue and this should be about half and half and I'm going to kind of dab it up there because I think that's even too much on my brush. 
Maybe not. Maybe I could use a little bit more. There we go. And I think I actually, I think I guessed right. So there's my green color. It's very similar to the green that's almost mixed down there. It's a little less deep in color, but it's definitely a big step up from the line. All right, and I might fix this little triangle to be wider. That was kind of a skinny slice. And then add a lot more blue to this mixture to make almost a turquoisey kind of color. And that's going to be your last, your last intermediate color in this blue and yellow mix. And I think I even need more. It takes a little while to kind of finagle these colors to come out exactly how you want them. So take some time just guessing and experimenting and maybe even like reworking the colors a little bit. So there's kind of a nice turquoisey blue green color. And then the last combination is our blue and red that we're going to be looking into. So we'll start off with a nice base of blue. Add that to the top of our mixing tray. And kind of wipe that brush off. And as you can see, my water is very, very, very muddy right now. And it's getting even more blue until we add this red, it's gonna turn kind of brown. And my clean water is still perfectly clean. So my colors are coming out how we want them to. Pretty true to color. So you're gonna pick up some red on your brush, add it into the purple, or excuse me, add it into the blue to make purple. And this is going to be kind of an indigo color. That's gonna be our intermediate color that's closest and I've got a lot of water, a lot of pigment on my brush. So I'm gonna dab it on my napkin. This is going to be the next intermediate color in the blue-red spectrum. Wash your brush off, add a little bit more red. This should be a nice purple color and I think that's a little bit too much more too much red so I'm gonna come in with a bit more blue. Just a little bit. Nope, and that's I think too dark again. So maybe I was right the first time around. Just a little bit of experimenting which makes this so much fun. And now my green is mixing in with my, with my purple, which is not good at the bottom of the tray. If you can see the green's kind of like going towards the gravitational pull of where the lid is. I think that's probably pretty good. And we're gonna go in and fill this little square in. And that's your purple hue. And then the last, the very last mixture, because our purple was our secondary color, the very last mixture will be our intermediate color, and that's going to be a really red purple. And I touched it in right into both of those colors a little sloppily. And that those little bleeds kind of make it artistic. Okay, so from there, we are going to learn about these different colors, which again, our primaries are red, yellow, and blue, make our secondaries orange, green, and purple. And then our intermediates would be the red orange, the yellow orange, the lime green, this kind of turquoisey color, indigo, and this very purpley red. So we're gonna go ahead and clean our brush. Now our water is very muddy. It looks kind of murky, like a yucky swamp. 
and we're gonna our clean water is still clean so we're still getting good color pulls from from our pigment from here try not to touch the color when we do this we're gonna put a wash around the outside ring of our color wheel and the reason we're doing this is we want to now make kind of a value chart these colors are the most saturated and the deepest value that we can make out of these colors. We're gonna pull the colors now and they're still very, very wet. So if you need to, you can even maybe dab some of them away with a napkin and that napkin will kind of just suck that pigment right up. We don't want it too, too wet. I really, my brush holds a lot of water. So you might need to kind of like dab your color wheel away. And from, from here, we're going to make kind of a value scale. So value is a color's lightness and darkness, and watercolor has this kind of magical effect where it is transparent because of the water. And so we don't have to add white to our colors in order to get them lighter. We just add water. And it's this cool kind of transparent look to lighten the hue in our spectrum. So we're going to go ahead and dip our brush and I'm going to get a lot of water on my brush um, to do this. Try to circle around kind of applying pressure with your brush without touching any of the colors. And now, although you probably can't see it, we have a nice kind of moat <laughs> around our color wheel making a little castle, a color castle. And from here, we are going to be pulling from the water into the color wheel. So we've got this nice circle around our color wheel and we're going to be pulling the water in. So I'm gonna start with red and between each color, we're gonna wash our brush and we're gonna be pulling the color in. And what happens is you get this really nice kind of spread. Pull the water into the color and the color will kind of ooze out. Again, pull the water into the color, and the color kind of, it, it's it's um, it's um the gate that holds the color in is that, is that um, dry paper, which is kind of fun. Pull the water into the yellow color, and you can see they're all kind of mixing around, so you've got this little rainbow effect. And then pull the water into the green. or the lime, I should say, here's our green, here's our secondary color. And our primary color, our blue, which is a little bit already mixing with the green. Our purples, our indigo. Now we're gonna run into a little bit more trouble because the red's made its way already around to the top. But that's okay. Look how cool this looks. Isn't it soothing just to kind of watch it ooze out? So that is kind of more of the value of our color, more the value you can get, kind of of a medium value. And if you wanted to go a step further, you could even pull another circle around. It might get a little muddy here. I haven't even really experimented around this with this myself you can pull in even one more layer if you wanted to into this kind of lighter value scale. See what that looks like. And washing your, try to wash your brush in between. I'm kind of going a little speedy now. So we can get some really light lights and some really dark darks. And it looks pretty cool. And they're not all exactly staying true to what the original color was because of course it's watercolor and we've got lots of water on our page. But that's what makes watercolor so fun, is kind of watching these mixes. All right, so we've got kind of our, the idea of primary colors, secondary colors, and we've introduced intermediate colors and now the value scale of like the lightest to darkest. So what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do in order to apply this is we're gonna get a fresh sheet of paper 
and we're going to set this aside. And I'm going to set it up here to dry and we're going to create a little rainbow. So I want you to try to use only, again, the primary colors and I want you to try to experiment with mixing them together and maybe even values. So you can take the red and maybe you, maybe you start off with the red at the bottom and I'm using this little flat paintbrush because it's easy to make lines that are kind of more equal and I've got a very dry brush so my last brush was really picking up all the color and this brush is not quite picking up a bunch of color and so with this, this dry pigment I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more water and actually go over it okay and from there I might add just one layer of water as a water wash just a layer of water and I might go over it one more time and you can kind of see that paint start to bleed. I'm going to do just the yellow and I'm going to go ahead and go right above the water wash to make this yellow and I'm going to wash that off and while these two are still kind of wet and interacting I'm going to go ahead and just kind of draw them into each other this way just by kind of mixing the water around and releasing that barrier of dry kind of pulling them into each other okay so from here I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer of just the water wash and I'm gonna overlap my yellow because I think my yellow is a little bit um, a little dry I'm going to go in with my blue and I'm going to create this nice rainbow with the blue running out of room and purple is going to be a hard one to do because we have to actually mix that when it's last and or else we'd have red at the end of the rainbow which we cannot have red at the red end of the rainbow. I'm going to kind of mix these guys together, pull the blue into that wash, and then on the other side, pull the yellow into that, into that side. And that's kind of more our primary colors of the rainbow. And you could add, you could add purple if you wanted to. And from here, you can do another rainbow and you can make it, I'm going to get a bigger piece of paper because I think that's too small. You can do our secondary colors that we'd mixed up here already, or you can mix up some intermediate colors. So I'm going to start with the red. I'm going to make my little, I'm going to make my red smaller this time because I ran out of room. And I'm really going to wet it down because I want a nice bleed and a nice reaction between these colors. I'm going to go in with our orange that we mixed up here. And I might leave a little space so they don't interact right away. And sometimes this is where the control happens is you can kind of choose where you want the reaction to happen. So let's say I want to bleed here. I'm just going to dab it and maybe another one right next to it and then maybe one right there and in the middle. We'll do five little bleeds. And the more water you have with your pigment the more it will allow the color and the pigment to kind of travel the paper you don't want it to get too puddled up or else it it doesn't look very good and actually kind of it doesn't let the pigment settle very evenly but the water is kind of the vehicle for this pigment to to move around we're going to do yellow and again i'm going to choose where i want these little breaks to be so I'm going to put one at the very end and I think I'm going to wash my brush and get a little bit more water. I'm going to put one here and I think I've got one at the top already. A little bit of a bleed going on. I'm going to go in with our blue or our, oh, our green we mix got purple in it. So I'm going to remix. I'm going to remix our green. 